It's that space opera time of year again. It seems that we weren't able to get our hands on a copy of Obsidio at Book Expo this year, and we're still waiting on our copies of The Empress, so we needed to have some form of space odyssey. Booktuber Sasha Alsberg and author Lindsay Cummings have co-written a new teen novel, which we were lucky enough to get our hands on at BookCon. The summary first caught our attention with its promise of Lady Pirates. What could be more fun than Lady Space Pirates? Andrama is known throughout the galaxy as the Bloody Baroness, a mercenary who tends to leave a trail of bodies behind her. She and her crew are always on the run, both from the authorities and their past. Her crew consists of Gilly, a young gunner, Breck, a giantess warrior who has no memory of her past, and Lyra, the pilot trying to make her own way in the world. And chief among them is Andrama, who is their leader, and also the most wanted of them out there. She was previously a bodyguard to her best friend Kaylee, who was the daughter of the leader of her home planet. Androma and Kaylee were best friends, but Androma accidentally crashed their plane when they were on a joyride and Kaylee died. Androma was branded a traitor, nearly executed, and has been on the run ever since. After Androma escaped execution, she ran into Dextro, a bounty hunter who taught her how to fight and survive and they fell in love before he betrayed her when he found out who she really was. Then she stabbed him, left him for dead, and stole his ship. So they're pretty even. Luckily for them, they've been forcefully reunited when General Cortez forces them to work together to rescue his kidnapped son. On the other side of the narrative, you also get the villain's perspective. Queen Noor of the dying planet Zen Patera has been working on a way to take revenge on the rest of the galaxy for ignoring Zen Patera's global warming problems and bombing them back to the Stone Age. She kidnapped Valen and has been developing a weapon that will reverse her planet's fortune. That new development is Zenith a mind control substance that can easily be weaponized. This book has been getting a lot of flack online. Some of it may be because Sasha Alsberg is a popular booktuber. Uh, some of it may be because this book was released as in an almost novella format by HarperCollins at one point before it was picked up by Harlequin Teen. Now, I wouldn't say that this book deserves a one-star rating, but I also wouldn't say that it's the best book ever, or that it's very original, and it runs on some pitfalls that a lot of new writers tend to fall into. For one thing, we are told a lot about characters that we can see is not true. Androma has this reputation for being the Bloody Baroness, for leaving a trail of bodies behind her, being a bloodthirsty killer, and enjoying the act of killing. Whereas, within a few minutes of meeting her, we realize that she's a complete marshmallow. She beats herself up over each person that she kills, the dead literally haunt her, and she keeps tallies on her sword so she can remember each and every life that she's taken. Merciless killer, not so much. A kitten is more of a heartless murderer than she is. Then there was the fact that before Andromeda was tried for treason, she was an elite soldier. Shouldn't she have been more mentally equipped to take a life than she is now? And also, after she escaped execution and met Dex, she says that he taught her how to be the crazy good fighter that she is now. Before, she was an elite soldier who trained every day of her life and was handpicked by the general to guard his daughter and heir. How were her fighting skills not top notch to begin with. There are a bunch of similar lapses in logic that pepper the plot and the characters that the editor probably should have smoothed out. Then there is the universe itself which doesn't feel entirely fleshed out. We're told about the five inhabitable planets. There are certain mutations and superpowers that have developed in the populations of each planet over the years. They also have different cultures and environments, etc., but they never get explored enough for us to really understand that there is a whole system out there. Some aspects of the plot are also fairly cliche, like the lovers who hate each other but can barely keep from boning on the nearest horizontal surface. You've read this over and over again. You know that they are clearly gonna work it out. And then there are unrealistic plot elements, like how Androma accidentally kills Kaylee in a plane crash. A big mistake, but a mistake all the same. And then suddenly everyone is just like, murderer! It's like, calm down. Yes, she made a horrible mistake, but some people should be able to put her deeds into perspective. So, yeah, there are a bunch of not-so-good things about this book. But there are also aspects of it which I liked. One of the stronger characters in this book is the villain Nor, who gets more and more interesting the longer the book goes on. Nor has some legitimate reasons for hating the galaxy and wanting justice for her planet. It's just the way that she goes about it that kind of makes her evil. She also has some fucked up relationships in her life that provide some interesting choices for her character. Her uncle raised her to be the perfect ice queen, but she still has affections for her boyfriend. Nora was raised through a massive war where her mother was missing for most of her life, 
and she herself has suffered losses in the war, not just her people. And her ultimate solution to get her planet some respect? It's pretty fucked up, but it's also very smart. If you can develop a mind control substance to make the galaxy submit to your whim, do it. And then a whole bunch of people don't have to die. With Zenith, there is some bad, there are some okay things, but there is potential for good in the next book. The book ends in a way that it might move the plot away from some of the cliches and take the story in a unique direction. I'm interested to read the next book even if this book isn't phenomenal. We've been in this situation before with other series. Sometimes the series get better, and sometimes it doesn't. With Red Queen, we had a lot of similar complaints, but we are optimistic. We now hate that series. Then there was Sarah J. Mass's first books in the Throne of Glass series, which had a lot of these pitfalls, and now is an excellent series. So who knows? Give this series a shot and judge it for yourself. It might be for you, you might have hope for it, or it might not be your thing at all. Check out Zenith and tell us what you think. And subscribe down below for more reviews. See you guys!